League champions, the Philadelphia Phillies versus the American League champions, the Kansas City Royals. Brought to you by the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. By Ford and your local Ford dealer, who invite you to test drive the new 1981 Ford cars and trucks. By Gillette Astra, the pivoting head razor, the pivot makes it better. And by Pepsi Cola and your local Pepsi Cola bomber, who invite you to catch that Pepsi spirit. sunshine last night by night here game four we get ready on that shot I just want to point out right at the top of the show those shadows you see starting along the first baseline they will definitely be a factor for the ball players but as far as the fans are concerned they are ready here in Kansas City as the club won their first game and they now trail only by one game Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Garagiola. It is 54 degrees here, a beautiful day in Kansas City. And these Kansas City Royals and their fans are ready for the Phillies, and the Phillies are ready for them. The starting pitchers, Larry Christensen for the Phillies, and it'll be Dennis Leonard for the Kansas City Royals. And two important people on the field, I've always felt, the catchers. Tom Seaver is talking to one of the most important ones, having a big series. Let's hear what they have to say. Thank you, Joe. With me, Bob Boone, the Golden Glove catcher of the Philadelphia Phillies. And, Bob, you've seen the Kansas City Royal pitching for three games. What's your impression of their pitching staff? Well, Tom, you know, we've been swinging the bat real well, so it's, it's really tough for us to assess it. Uh, Larry Gurr did an excellent job against us the other night. Dennis Leonard, we were told, did not have his best stuff. And uh, so far, we've been uh, excited to hit off of this pitching staff. Cuisenberry uh, has got a tough, tough sinking pitch we've had some success off of. But uh, so far, we've got, been swinging a hot bats, and, and they've really not confused us too much. This afternoon, you've got Larry Christensen going for you, a big right-hander. What can we expect from him? Well, Larry's a big, strong kid. It's uh, real hard. He's got a good breaking ball, good slider, excellent change-up, and has really fine control. And uh, Larry's come off several injuries. Uh, is coming off an elbow surgery this year, but came back to, to give us a big lift down the stretch. And I think you'll see an excellent game out of Larry Christensen. All right, Bob, thank you very much. Tony Kubek is over here with Daryl Porter. Hi, right, Tom. I'm with Daryl Porter, the catcher from the Royals. And Daryl, catchers are either considered very dumb or very smart. Last night, you were dumb because you allowed 15 base runners, but they were stranded. You became very smart. No question about it. <clears throat> we did great. Did perfect. Uh, we uh, we really haven't been able to pitch the Phillies like we would we would like to pitch them. Uh, Gurry did uh, very well the other day for six or seven innings, but uh, uh, basically we just hadn't been able to do what we want to do. All right, Dale. Today, Dennis Leonard he pitched game one. He had a four nothing lead. All of a sudden, he lost his composure on the Boa Steel. What can we expect today? Well, I, you look for uh, the guy with his. Uh, uh, Pitching capabilities, you look for him to come back and do a good job. He's got great stuff. I know it didn't look like it the other day, but uh, everybody has their bad games, and we look forward to Denny just uh, pretty much overpowering him today and uh, using a good fastball. And if he if he can spot his fastball decent and throw that halfway decent slider, he's going to be in real good shape. All right, Darrell, I thank you. Good luck today. Back upstairs now to Joe Garagiola. Okay, Tony, a couple factors in that conversation, I think, about his fastball, but they've seen Dennis Leonard. It's been one time around, and so I think that now maybe the jitters are all out. Although, with the way the fans are reacting here, and again, going back to what I said last night, I think that fans, usually when they were talking about it, was always in terms of intimidation. But the Philly fans, really behind their ball club, were a definite factor. And last night, especially in the extra inning, these Kansas City Royal fans, a definite factor. A beautiful day here. I mentioned that. There are some clouds up there which will help the infield. They should not have any problems with pop flies. But those shadows will be a factor. But now let's go to the PA announcer for the announcements. The stadium safety regulation prohibiting the carrying of cans, bottles, or liquid containers into Royal Stadium. Thank you. Thank you. We now direct your attention to the commissioner's box at the home plate side of the Royals dugout for today's ceremonial first pitch, which will be thrown in honor of our young amateur athletes. 
the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, founded in 1954 by Major League Baseball and Branch Rickey, is located just across the highway from Royal Stadium. FCA strives to strengthen the moral, mental, and spiritual fiber of the greats and unsung heroes of the sports world. With us today to throw out today's ceremonial first pitch is the national president of the FCA, Mr. John Erickson. Mr. Erickson, fire away. There you see Commissioner Boy Kuhn. We're poised. And now, let's meet the American League Champion Royals. Take the field. Their fans cheering them. And we're getting set for the national anthem. And once again, we'll wait for the PA announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, an invitation from the Royals to stand and salute the colors as presented by the U.S. Army Color Guard with the Winnetonka High School Marching Band and Kansas City's own Marilyn May. We honor America with our national anthem. So proudly we hail in the twilight's last gleaming the broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so singing her only hit. We'll be right back for the start after these messages. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Back at Royal Stadium, here is a lineup for the Philadelphia Phillies for Game 4 of this 1980 World Series. Leading off, Lonnie Smith in left field. Batting second, the first baseman, Pete Rose. Batting third, the right fielder, Bake McBride. Batting cleanup, third base, Mike Schmidt. Dale Unser is the designated hitter. Center fielder, Gary Maddox. Second base, Manny Trio. Shortstop, Larry Boa. And then the catcher, Bob Boone. And now we'll...
take a look at the defensive alignment behind Dennis Leonard. Willie Wilson in left, Amos Otis in center, Clint Hurdle in right field, George Brett at third, UL Washington in short, Frank White at second base, Willie Mays Aikens at first, Daryl Porter the catcher, Dennis Leonard the pitcher. Dennis Leonard, the 20-game winner for the Kansas City Royals during the regular season. You see his stats there. 111 with a 3.79 ERA. Pitched just three and two-thirds innings in game one of this World Series. Leonard is 6'1", 190, 29 years old. A real workhorse. Pitched 280 innings, as you see. 271 hits. That's a pretty good innings pitch to hit ratio. What you see is a riding fastball and a good slider. Then it's got a little rattle in game one and Billy Connors, the pitching coach, said he sat down and talked with Dennis, and what he's going to do is go right after the hitters today, try to be more aggressive, keep his mind on exactly what he's supposed to do on the mound. Right now, Tom and Joe, Dallas Green, Bobby Wine went out to home plate. They went to home plate umpire Don Denkinger, and they were pointing out to center field. There is Green. Apparently, some of the hitters feel that the cameras Beneath our NBC camera in center field on the ledge, but the ones below that have some kind of glare that may reflect into the eyes of the hitters. So Denkinger now is going out with the people hanging over the railing. He will probably request the PA man to say, hey, some of you get down. It's too distracting to the hitters. Tony, last night we had some problems. Ron Luciano was uh, talking about it when uh, Bill Kunkel came in from right field. Ron went to Kunkel to find out what that was all about last night. Yeah, what happened was we, we thought something was going on in the dugout. What it was, they had a monitor in there. Every team uh, tapes their batter, every swing he makes, and their pitcher, every pitcher he pitches. But that's not supposed to be in the dugout because they might steal signs or something. But here in a World Series, there's no place else to put it. There's no room behind home plate. And there's no room in the photographer's bench. And so what they had, they had it in the dugout. And Paul Pryor kept saying, they're not doing anything. Will you leave it alone? They're not doing anything. They're not seeing anything. Kunkel says, hey, they're yelling at me down there from the bullpen because they can see what's going on. So let's re remove it. And today they've removed it. We won't have any of that trouble. Now, they're not going to blame NBC for having theirs in it. I just want you to repeat nice and slow, like all good umpires talk, and tell us whose monitor it was. Uh, it was not NBC. It was the Phillies' own tape machine. Sensational work, Ron. As we look at the ballpark, the dimensions, 330 down the line, tricky corners here in this ballpark, Tony. It sure is, and while they are removing the camera that somebody put up today, we'll look at it. Somebody apparently added a camera out there that was distracting the hitters, or they thought might. When NBC goes in and any of the other networks, they request, request camera positions for the best shots for you viewers so that they will not also obstruct the play of the game. And somebody else added a camera there, and it is being removed. And there are the NBC camera way up on top on the ledge. Those shots that you get that Joe often asks for and Tom Seaver, where you can see this picture signs and the movement on the ball. That's the shot you would get. So it's taking a while with this delay to get the game underway while they take down the camera. Are you going to go ahead and do it? And with a little smile, I think you could tell that he was did keep us cool. So we're ready to go the first pitch to Lonnie Smith. Foul not a play. He doesn't wait very long. Smith 0 for 1 hitting at 364. I think one thing the Phillies will find out today about Leonard, he throws a little bit harder than he did the other day in uh, Philadelphia. George Brett. After last night having to run a couple of times, came out this morning, said he is in pretty good shape, feels no pain. Leonard throwing a slider here, looks like. Ronnie Smith tried to stop his swing, and a little courtesy hopper down to George Brett and fired him out very easily. One out, Pete Rose. strike. The Royals have been giving Pete Rose a steady diet of hard stuff on the inside part of the plate the last couple of games. Pete still with just the one hit that he got in the series last night, which drove in a run, broke his bat 
on that base. That's something that Pete Rose rarely does, but it'll be interesting to see if Leonard continues to throw him hard stuff. That was hard stuff. One ball, two strikes, one out. tried to keep it from going into the dugout, could not, and Rose gets an extra base. See how they score it. What looked like was going to turn out to be a sensational play. Frank White off balance. This ball has got to be at least stopped by Willie Mays Aikens. They may have scooted on the dirt. Daryl Porter hustled as hard as he could. Here's a different angle on it from right field. This will show you the range of Frank White. Goes behind second base. It's got to be stopped. And when Daryl Porter, Daryl Porter tried to stop the ball sliding on his legs, it went into the dugout. So it'll be an air charge, I'm assuming, to Frank White. You can forget the assumption it was charged to him, Tony. High fly ball. Wilson coming in. Makes the play. Two outs. Rose credited with the hit. Gets the second on the error. There you see him. Here is Mike Schmidt. Ball game just underway. Schmidt bounced out. Rose hit a ground ball. And White made a great backhanded play. Threw it past the first baseman. Rose is on second. McBride is just flying to left. You haven't missed a thing. Schmidt with one home run. tight pitcher. He was referring to Rich Gale. Gale throws hard, but I think, as I said before, Leonard did not throw hard his first outing. He has good breaking stuff, but he may surprise him with their fastball. It's fouled out of play. We got a reading yet on that famous radar gun? My buddy Paul Moscow over here tells me 90. We got a 90. Down there. 90. Wow. Not too bad. So he's throwing pretty good. Uh, use Dallas Green's expression. Not too shabby. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Shaking off a number of pitches. Lineup. Leading off, Willie Wilson in left field. Second baseman, Frank White, bat second. Batting third, George Brett. In the cleanup spot, Willie Akins. Designated hitter is Hal McRae. Center field, Amos Otis, a hot hitter. Right field, Clint Hurdle. The catcher is Daryl Porter. And the shortstop, UL Washington. Defensively for Philadelphia, Dal Unser in left, Gary Maddox in center, Bake McBride in right, Mike Schmidt in third, Larry Bow at short, Manny Trio the second baseman, Pete Rose at first, Bob Boone the catcher, and Larry Christensen the pitcher. And Joe, as the lineups were taken up to home plate, we'd gotten the word just before the game started. The original lineup had Lonnie Smith in left and Unser DHing. Now, Dallas Green finally caught what he had done, and he finds out that 
he can play the man there. Unser, who's a much better outfielder than Lonnie Smith in left field, so he changed those spots. He has made Unser the left fielder, and Lonnie Smith his DH. Larry Christensen, the pitcher for the Phillies today, five and one. He had elbow surgery earlier in the year and came back off of that elbow surgery very quickly. Pitched just 73 and two thirds innings, six foot four, 215 pounds, 26 years old, a big, strong man. You'll see an overpowering fastball at times. Good riding fastball with good control and out, an, an outstanding slider. It was a curveball on occasion, a changeup on occasion, just maybe six or eight times a game, but mainly you see a, a very good fastball and an outstanding slider. Willie Wilson, they've been able to get him by keeping the ball in on his hands. Let's see how Larry goes. Right down the middle. Strike one. Good fastball. You can hear that ball pop all the way up here. This is grip. One and one. He chokes up on that bat. He just needs to hit the ball to where it touches the ground twice, and he's got himself a base hit. One strike. Base hit. He's on. Now the excitement will start around first base with Christensen. As I recall, Christensen has a little trick move with that knee. There it is. He fights off the pitch. Like they wanted to, maybe not far enough in, Tom. Maybe they went off the plate, but he did fight it off the left. He got behind Willie Wilson and had to throw a fastball. Looked like it was right down in the middle of the plate. But this will be an interesting situation at first base, Tony. Christensen does has a does have a very good move, and of course Willie Wilson, the outstanding base runner in the American League. White is the batter, and Boone may have noticed something in Wilson's running because he was ready to double pitch out. There's the move. It gets high. Short right field, 
fake McBride. Wilson tagging up. He starts up holes as throw comes in. And you can see how fake McBride knew the speed of uh, Willie Wilson at third because he wasted no time to get that ball back. And Wilson has been outstanding scoring. McBride played the ball very well, Tony. A three and two pitch fastball out over the fight. White popped it up to right field. McBride got behind the ball where he could set his feet, go through the ball, and make a good throw to home, good strong throw to home. And I think if Wilson had tried to score, he'd have been out. Would not have been a very bright play had he tried to score with this fella coming up because here's a fella drove in more runs in games he played. George Brett. He had 118 RBIs during the season. He played in 117 games. Walt Dropo, the only other player in the league to do that. Dropo played 136 games with 144 RBIs. Tap foul. Defensively in the infield as Jose Martinez throw the ball out. They throw balls out more often on artificial surface. You get scuffed. But look at the infield. Left side playing in for plate to plate. Trio is back and Rose is in. One ball, one strike on George Brett. One man out. Bottom of the first, no score. Base man. Extra bases. At least a double. He's digging hard. He's going to go for three. He'll make it. And he slid. Here it is. Tom, this man hits more good pitches than anybody in the American League. Wasn't down enough, but it was down and in, a breaking pitch. And he showed kind of speed he's got. Here he comes, second to third, he slides. Said he was going to try head first. But not that time. He slid a little bit more on his side than he usually does and came up with a grin on his face. So everything is in working order. One nothing, Royals lead, Willie Mays Aikens, and now the infield has moved in, it's fouled back. One strike. They continue to give Willie Mays Aikens the right field line. He got the game-winning RBI last night to left center field. So they've got him stacked right, but he's been able to find the holes. Aikens, two home runs, five runs batted in, five for 12. And there they go again with the line as we look at the defense. Look at Maddox toward left center. Right center field is McBride. Well hit, way back. Chalant Saval, and you saw today for the first time the way the Royals 
have played all season long. He took his time in center field, Maddox, and look what McRae did. These guys bust out right out of the batter's box. They don't wait till their first base before they start moving. That was a case of literally stealing a base on an outfielder. And last night they won their first game, and they have really come out. And you heard Jim Fry tell Brian Gumbel as we look at Hal McRae, if we can score a couple runs early, it's going to be tough. Well, they have done that. Rose always used the expression as we see McRae sliding again. My stolen bases come when I hit a single and turn it into a double. And McRae may have learned that from him too, Tommy. So it's three to nothing, one man out. The batter is Amos Otis, hitting at 545. out of play. Otis has two home runs. Five runs batted in. He's seven for 13. The Philadelphia bullpen up. As these Kansas City Royals there, Dickie Knowles loosening up. Christensen, a single by Wilson, a triple by Brett, a home run by Aikens, a double by McRae. Royals have really come out of the shoot. Well hit, deep to right field, going way back, way back, off the wall. McRae rounding third, he'll score. Otis stops at second, four nothing. Remember, the Kansas City Royals led four to nothing in the first game. Dallas Green is coming out now. The four to nothing lead looked like Kansas City was going to blow Philadelphia out in that first game. And those Phillies came roaring back. It'll be an interesting just to watch to see the change in attitude. Hey, all three games have been crazy. The first two ball games, you might have thought as Green waves to the bullpen, they were Kansas City's the way the game went last night. Philly Strand 15. You say, hey, that ought to be their game. We've had three like that. Could have and we're going to have a pitching chain, and we've got a break in the action, but we've got plenty of fireworks when we come back. The Royals have hit Larry Christensen very hard, five hits and four runs here, still in the bottom of the first inning. The last time Larry Christensen pitched, pitched was in the playoffs against the Astros. That was in relief, and he got hit very hard. In the game that he started against the Astros, he pitched very well, but the last two times out have been very tough on Larry Christensen, and obviously you can tell the frustration that he carries right now. New pitcher now, Dickie Knowles has come on to face left-hander Clint Hurdle. And middle relief is not quite as important with a designated hitter. You don't go to it, I don't think, quite as often. But when you look at Philadelphia, they've got McGraw in short relief, Carlton starting from left side, and Soche, who they use in short relief at times, they, they better come up with somebody else somewhere that can go a few middle innings in situations like this from the left side. Outside. Ball one. Twelve total bases in this inning for the Kansas City Royals. Bat rack really juiced up today.
Joe Porter. Porter looking for his first base hit. He's 0 for 7. Open stance, a pull hitter. Wind is blowing out. There's the strike. outside ball one in the pregame interview with Brian Gumble Jim Fry the manager used the expression rabbits and that's this is a royal attack this is the kind of rally the rabbits run and the big guys hit two balls no strikes or in my day they would say the nits and the gnats bite you the lions and tigers will eat you the, all the base runners are on Otis at third hurdle at second Washington at first two outs Bouncing ball. Rose will have to run hard. Race by Knowles. Got him. That guy's exciting, hitting the bouncing ball in the first baseman. Inning ends. Crowd reacts on their feet. Because Knowles' foot came down while Wilson's foot was in the air. That's how close that was. There's a strike to Del Unser. Now Leonard with a four-run cushion. Used to be you would just throw strikes, but you can't very well do that to this Phillies ball club. They can come from behind, and if that's not an understatement. Looper, left field. Wilson's coming in. He's there. Willie Wilson, described as the most disruptive, productive, concentration breaker in baseball, and you, I'll buy that, I'll tell you. Here's Maddox. Ball one. Maddox, two for 10, takes inside. And it's two balls, no strikes. No home runs, one run batted in, hitting at 200. Stance. Looper, right field. It's going to drop for a base hit. Hurdle plays it on a big hop. Maddox is on. Does this situation look familiar? Game one, one out. Kansas City leading by four. Boa stole second base, surprised everybody, and shook up Leonard. Not Bo on first, but Gary Maddox. See how Hurdle waited back on that ball in this artificial surface so it wouldn't bound over his head. Guys don't try for as many shoestring catches on those little loopers on this stuff. Perfect example last night when Lonnie Smith tried it in left field and Aikens ended up with a triple. Line foul. 
did you notice, or was it my imagination, how much more closely and how much more time Leonard took watching the base runner at first base? Well, that uh -huh. memory of Boa running, trailing by four, you got to believe, forget the scoreboard, just assume it's nothing, nothing if you're Porter and Leonard. But Leonard took a lot of time looking because they, they will run. They have been running. Fouls it back, Manny Trio, high fastball. Trio, three for 11, hitting at 273, one run batted in. Kansas City, four, Philadelphia, nothing, top of the second, one out, two strikes to count on Trio as we look at Dennis Leonard. with our handheld camera looking right down that right field line. A gap between first and second. Trio tried to punch one through there. Good lead by Maddox. I'll tell you, that's the second time Trio's done that, and he's going to cash in all his dance tickets. He's not going. His bunions have to be hurting as we look at Maddox. There it is. A high pitch. It's an unusual one for a guy. That's about bell high to chopped off his foot. Usually it's that down and in sinker, right-hander to right-hander. Maddox is getting a good lead off first base, but he doesn't seem to be leading towards second. Ground ball could be two. There's one. Nope. Into the stands again. On the second base goes Trio, low throw. It'll be an error on UL Washington. It'll be an error on UL Washington, but watch the way Frank White, very unlike him, shuffled the ball with two hands. Look at this. You barehand the ball. I gotta believe that may have, may have fooled Washington a little bit. And of course, he's got the runner Maddox, who got a good jump bearing down. So it'll be an error on UL Washington. Here, Tommy from left center field. It's Maddox. You know, one of my roommates in the big leagues has been Buddy Harrelson, who was an outstanding shortstop for the New York Mets, now playing in Texas. One of the things he told me he always liked from his infielders or from a pitcher on a double play is to get the ball firmly at second base so you can have a good feel of it when you do get a hold of it. Left field, Wilson coming in hard, going out, Washington. Here's a throw, trying to score a trio. He'll make it against my Porter. Bo is rounding second, he'll hold on. Coming all the way, it's a four to one ball game. I tell you, a four run lead is not safe with this ball club. So the air on UL Washington hurts. Willie Wilson does not make a good throw. As shallow as he was playing, he took too much time right there, and then he throws the ball offline. And Leonard was not backing up Porter, so they made a few mistakes on one play. Watch how much time he takes. He's got to throw that man out. I think the reports probably said when you saw Leonard, he wasn't back in the whole plate in time. Talked about Willie Wilson, his arm is not very strong. It's average. Here is Bob Boone. It's a strike. The scoring on that play, Boa gets his single, obviously, credit him with an RBI, and takes second on the throw. No error. Tony, that I've noticed now going into game four, of all the people that I've talked to around the American League people, the American League writers, they've told me that this Kansas City club does the fundamentals correctly, that they do the fundamentals very well. And there's many, many times during this series I haven't seen it. They have not done the, they have not done the fundamentals well. You're right, they haven't. High, two balls and one strike. The on-deck batter, you saw him with Lonnie Smith. This Phillies ball club, they do one great fundamental. They can come from behind. comes the pitching coach, Billy Connors. Tom, you know, there was no error charged on that when the ball got by. Oh, but, and I know earned run averages don't mean a thing in World Series play. But that is unfair because the runners in second base, should he score, it's a run charge to Leonard. That team error concept they talked about, you got to give an error to somebody for over the second of a long haul. 
I think for a pitcher's ERA. Two balls, one strike, two outs, four to one. Balls at second base. We're in the top of the second. Connors went out, did you look at Larry Bow? Billy Connors went out to talk to Dennis Leonard. What Leonard will have a tendency to do sometimes, incorrectly on the mound, is to drop his elbow and start getting the ball up high in the strike zone. Well hit. Red is there. The throw in time. And that ends the inning. The Phillies score one run. So as we go into the bottom half of the second inning to score here, Kansas City Royals four. Philadelphia Phillies won. Four to one. Kansas City leading. We're in the bottom half of the second inning. Kansas City came out of the shoot, but so did the Phillies. Greg Luzinski, who had that viral infection, is here with the ball club. He is not playing. And let's get a report from Merle Harmon. All right, Joe. Bill Giles is the executive vice president of the Phillies. Where's the ball? Well, the bull wants to play, uh, but he's feeling still a little weak from that influenza. I think he might be in there pinch hitting before the game's over, and he'll be ready to play tomorrow. All right, he was the DH in Philadelphia. Isn't the DH ideally suited for him? Yes, I think it is. Uh, he's not that great a defensive player, and I think the DH is a good position for him. All right, Bill, thank you very much. Now back up to the booth. Strike one to count on Frank White. That was Philadelphia party line as we look at the Royals talked to the bull before the game he said if there's Dallas Green if I'm not playing if Dallas Green thinks somebody's better than I fine but he should at least tell me why I'm not playing remember Lazinski had two game winning RBI in the championship series a home run and a double against the Astros center field coming in hard Maddox he's there one out Tony, I don't want to belabor the point, but it sounded like when you talked to Luzinski, he might have been a touch upset. Oh, was he? You oh, talked to him also, didn't you, Tom? I talked to him, Tony, and I would say he was a little bit more than a, a touch upset. He wants to play, and he's uh, a little irritated not being in the lineup, for sure. And it could be, as we look at George Brett, it could be that the Bull heard everything we said because he's not on the bench, so he's probably in the clubhouse watching the game. Hope you feel better, Bull. George Brett, what a hitter. A triple his first time up. Brett, I don't know what you can say about this guy. Six for 11. Takes it low, ball one. Comes off what they called minor surgery. Hits a home run his first time up after the surgery. Triple this time. Play by Trio. That is what is known in the major leagues as a hard out. Manny Trio, one of the smoothest feeling second baseman in the National League with a whip like arm. I love to watch him throw. Looks like he's never going to get rid of it. And then, then pop, perfect throw to Pete Rose. Here is the man of the hour. Last night, it was his base hit that won it. He also had a triple scored. Had two home runs in Philadelphia. Hit a two-run homer in the first inning. Ball one, Willie Akins. Akins with 17 total bases, leading all hitters. Seven runs batted in. Now that's what I call a Kansas City fan with a billboard yet. <laughs> one one pitch. Dickie Knowles in relief for the Phillies outside. Two and one.
one to score. Ball one. You'd think that Willie Aikens was on Broadway taking all those curtain <laughs> calls coming out. Here I am. In all the free World Series hype and analysis, the edge and speed was given to the Royals, power to Philadelphia. It is now seven to two in home runs in favor of the Royals. It's his second home run. He hit two in Philadelphia. And when he hits a home run, he really likes to look at it. I don't blame him. 2-1 pitch inside. He only regrets not being able to watch himself hit. Well, he knows it is gone. Breaking ball right down in the middle of the plate. You might have seen the flinch of Bob Boone. And Aiken stood there for, what, three, four seconds before he moved. He enjoyed it. in the attitude remember they led four to nothing in philadelphia and they seem to say well that's enough but they are really good. this is kansas city royals brand of baseball right here otis ball one it's aggressive hal mcray has hit what would amount to a, a single for most ball players and he has just literally stolen the base on two different outfielders maddox in the uh, first inning and here on mcbride he doesn't stop. He gets to first base and makes a left turn going one way. Last ball. One ball, one strike. Aggressive base running. Aggressive hitting. Power hitting by Willie Aikens. As Whitey Herzog did when he had this club, Jimmy Fry said the same thing. Do not be afraid to make mistakes of over-aggressiveness on the bases. If you get thrown out, I'll take the heat. So they don't fear running bases. It's a French Ricky statement. Prefer the errors of enthusiasm to the complacency of wisdom. High fly ball. Right field. McBride is there. Ends the inning with the Royals. Well, yesterday we had some 42,000, and with that shot we see there from the Goodyear Blimp America with Captain John Moran, it looks like we got a jam-packed ballpark, just judging from the parking lot. And what a ball game. Lonnie Smith, ball one. I tell you, Willie Aikens imitating Reggie Jackson in many ways by watching the ball as Smith hits a high hopper to Brett. And who can ever forget talking about Jackson, those three home runs he had against the Dodgers. Will Willie Aikens do that today? I recall he hit those three home runs on three swings, three consecutive swings. I don't know, but he hit him a long way, and, and, and those two that Willie Aikens has hit are really not cheapies. Pete Rose with one out, nobody on. He was safe in the first inning. And an infield hit, went to second on an error. Strike. strike. Leonard said before the game, Joe, that he may have paid too much attention to the scouting reports that he got and gotten away from his type of ball game. The good aggressive, good hard stuff, good slider. He said he's going to try and get everything out of his mind, just pitch his ball game today, not really go by those scouting reports. Two balls and one strike. So really he made his own fatal mistake because you still have the ball. You get the information, but you have to do it. The pitcher's the one that has to make the decision about going about getting your job done. Two balls and one strike. One out. 
Didn't mean to swing a foul ball. That's when I used to get upset when pitchers would say he called for it. As a catcher, you merely suggest Bunyan Head out there has got the ball. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, ho, ho. We're now Bunyan Head. So. You didn't get much sleep last night, did you? Two balls and two strikes. Line drive, left field. Wilson plays him perfectly. He's there. Not an easy outfield spot when the sun comes out as it is now. Remember Bucky Dent and Lou Pinella, the championship series here where they lost the ball. So there are two outs, and we got Sports World following our ball game. A pretty good fight. Michael Spinks, I tell you, he's coming on strong. This will be a tremendous stepping stone if he can win it, but he's got a dandy to go against. Yaki Lopez. He'll be following our game here. Four o'clock Eastern time, Sports World. McBride takes it low and it's ball one. We're yelling at Dakinger, that's why he's looking over to the Royals' dugout because they said that McBride bunted at him. He was just waving, trying to be distract distracted. Two balls, no strikes. towards the infield. Not a factor yet. Pride holding. Schmidt takes it high. There's a readout on the radar gun. 89 miles per hour. He's throwing pretty good. We had the other one at 90. Is that average or better than average, Tom? I would say that's right about average for a, for a, a good hard thrower. Not a Tommy John type of sinker ball pitcher, but for a fastball pitcher anywhere on the 88 to the 90, 91 mile an hour range. You're, that's that's throwing the ball very well. There you see the insert. You'll see how fast he's throwing it. And if he hits the ball, Schmidt does, you'll see how fast it goes off the bat. Breaking ball. The 56, you see, was the catcher's throwback. We got him covered every which way. I tell you, this game is getting so scientific. What happened to the guy that played good old country hardball and fired it? That's an STS gun, spherical tracking system. And if you can't pitch, it won't help you. Foul straight back to that number. As he's thrown. Tom is the variance in his speeds, the fact that he might ride a fastball, might take off and then turn a fastball over, try and sink it. That would be the little bit slower one. Leonard throws two kinds of fastballs, the sinking and the riding fastball. He can be overpowering at times, and the harder the fastballs, that last one over 90 miles an hour, would be the riding fastball. That's why Schmidt got under it, hit the bottom half of the ball, and fouled it back over our heads. And the other sinking fastball would be in the 88 to 90, 89 mile an hour range. Ball start. Looked like he was going, McBride. Schmidt fouls it off. Count remains at one ball, two strikes, two outs, five to one. Kansas City leading third inning. The first person that I'd heard of who used the radar equipment was a college coach, Danny Litweiler. Then Earl Weaver picked it up, experimented with it in spring training in Miami. He uses it at times. But they gauge 
breaking pitches and difference between fastball and changeup also. So there are a lot of important ways it can be used, not just measuring sheer speed. Profile. You know the first I ever heard of radar, uh, this radar thing is when that state trooper caught a tree going 35 miles an hour, and then the <laughs> second time it was a barn. <laughs> they had some kind of a cord suit. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Hi, there goes the runner. The throw is. He got him. Beautiful throw by Porter. Porter to White gets McBride. So they're trailing by four, but they're still running, so. So, five to one, Royals leading the Phillies, and we talked about Reggie Jackson's home run. Who can ever forget him? Here comes a fall classic flashback. I know you're gonna enjoy it as much as Reggie did. Reggie Jackson at the plate for the Yankees. In his two previous at-bats tonight in the stadium, Jackson has blasted homers. The Dodgers' Charlie Huff on the mound getting ready to pitch to Reggie. Here it is. There's a swing and a drive deep into center field, and it's over the fence for a home run. Jackson's third consecutive. A feat previously accomplished in series play by only Babe Ruth. Hurdle takes it on the outside corner and it's strike one. Hurdle walked his first time up. High. One ball, one strike. Five to one, Kansas City leading. Outside, two and one. the end of the bat it's going to be trouble it's a base hit it'll be extra bases another one hurdle is on at second that is the fourth double they have a triple and two home runs they have hardly stopped at first base just make that left turn and go watch the english on this ball as it scoots down against the wall it's bill kunkel they just keep on going under with no play you know, I, I got to make one point about that steal when Bragg gets caught. We talked a lot about Boa stealing four runs down. Well, Boone was hitting behind him in that situation. But when you've got the home run leader of the major leagues, as McBride got caught, Schmidt, you take the bat out of hit hand, it's not as good a play, is it? Nope. Especially if you get thrown out. Which you did. Right. It's not even a good time to attempt it. Right. It's starting to get soft, Tony. I'm agreeing with you. ball one strike these Kansas City Royals really came out of the shoot five runs and two innings two balls and one strike home runs doubles triples territory makes the play. And Joe, you can tell when a guy like Porter's in the slump as you look at Hurdle at second. When he tries to pull the ball, he's a natural pull hitter, and he can't pull the ball. He's pulled off the ball. He wanted to get that runner to third base, at least a ground ball with no outs, and he pops it up to the left side. It's really hurting with the bat. Hurdle's at second. Here is UL Washington. Washington had a base hit his first time up. It's a strike. Billy's bullpen getting busy. We're in the bottom of the third. The Royals out in front, five to one. Bouncing ball. Trio has it. Over to first. Washington's out. Hurdle goes to third. 
I think there are a couple stories developing here, Tony. Number one, the way the, as we look at the hurdle at third, Aikens, of course, the home runs, the way he's just electrified everybody. But the difference in the Kansas City attitude. They had four runs over in Philadelphia and kind of sat on it. Now they're still going out. And this Philly bunch, in playing in the playoff games, it just came from behind. The only way they seem to know how to play is from behind. They're not out of it, and they're still running behind. Here is Wilson, ball one. Four of the extra base hits by the Royals today have been by left-handed hitters, and their run production and extra base power is from the left side. One ball, one strike. A left-hander, Kevin Sochet, loosens up for the Phillies. Wilson and Denkinger have a little talk as we look at Dickie Knowles, the pitcher. strike. Wilson had 184 singles this season, which is a new American League record. He went to bat 705 times. Out on strike. So that ends the third inning. Royals do not score. We complete three innings of baseball here. The Kansas City Royals, five. The Philadelphia Phillies, one. There you see the proud Peacock right where it should be at the World Series. To the left, Arrowhead Stadium and Royal Stadium. The Harry S. Truman Sports Complex here in Kansas City. What a tremendous sight. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. WTWO, Terre Haute. Joe Garagiola with Tony Kubek and Tom Seaver. It's 5-1, to one, Kansas City leading 5-9-2 and two for Kansas City. One run, three hits, and one error for the Phillies. We're in the top half of the fourth inning, and Mike Schmidt will lead it off. He was the batter when Bake McBride was out trying to steal. Schmidt was out on strikes his first time up, a long way from the plate. Bunts it beautifully. Leonard, the only man who can make the play, and he can't. So Schmidt gets it started. They need base runners, and the big guy says, I'm going to get something going. That could ignite him, Tom. Mike Schmidt is an exceptional athlete, handles the bat extremely well, a great feeler, outstanding speed for a good man. He bunted last night, bunting again today, trying to get something going. Leonard makes a mistake, and Looks toward the runner before he gets his hand on the ball, but even if he had, it was such a good bun, I doubt if he could throw Mike Schmidt out. Mike has outstanding speed for a big man. Here is Del Unser. Unser, the left fielder. Takes outside, ball one. He's really bounced around, Unser. His father, former major leaguer, and I just love the line he used after his clutch hit when he won the game in Philadelphia. He said, this scratch is a 30-year itch for me. That's how long he's waited. At first base, Mike Schmidt. There's the strike. It's kind of interesting on this Phillies ball club, Ray Boone, his son Bob, Al Unser, his son Dell playing here. One ball, one strike, nobody out. Dennis Leonard with a four-run lead. It's five to one, Kansas City over the Phillies. We're in the fourth. Schmidt is back easily. Joe and Tom, we've got some action in the bullpen down at Kansas City. The Royals. The one-one pitch. Fly ball, left center field, Wilson, Otis, Otis says, I'll take it, and he does, so he's one away. You see that often in this ballpark, it is a rough sun feeling left, and it is glaring in the eyes of Willie oh, Wilson, so Otis will come over and look away from the sun and take a lot of balls away from him. The shot there, see how big this park is in the alleys, it's 85 in each alley, and then it goes out to 410. Wilson, you can see the glare of the sun. The glasses are down, but he still hasn't picked up the ball. He's almost trying to look through the webbing of his glove. I've heard some outfielders have tried that. 
to break up the glare, but Osa comes over and helps him out. That is the best way. Here is Maddox. First pitch hits it. Little tripper Aikens will race him and got him. Long call, just did get him. Really a close play. A very difficult close play at first base. Aikens get over there, gets over there, looks almost like it's gonna be a three camera pileup going into first base. An interesting aspect of Gary Maddox up at the plate. That's the first breaking ball that Leonard has thrown on the first pitch. Aiken makes a makes a good play to get in behind Leonard to make the tag on Maddox. Maddox. We've had several of these lapses by pitcher. Gale not backing up a play. Leonard today at home plate, and again he for, did not get over to first base quickly enough. There are two outs. Trio doesn't get a strike one. That's rendered really on top of that play, hesitating. It looked like he wasn't just, just sure. He has had three close plays. He's making those Fox River Valley folks, the area comes from Wisconsin, very happy, calling a good ball game at first. Trio hit no a force play. Went to second on an air. He scored on a base hit by Boa. There's one to right field. Hurdle is going back. Should have no problem. Makes the catch. And that ends the fourth inning for the Phillies. They do not score. So we go to the bottom half of the fourth inning to score here. Royals five and uh, Phillies one. And two up. It'll be White Brett Aikens. See this little baby? No other pocket camera does what it does. It's unique because only the new Kodak Ectralight cameras have built-in Sensolite flash. Sensolite flash turns itself on and flashes automatically when you need more light. It even turns itself off. You'll never worry about flash again. These new cameras with Sensolite flash are the easiest to use Kodak pocket cameras ever. I trust my stories to cameras and film from Kodak, America's storyteller. It's coming. It's taking over in offices coast to coast. It's the paper blob. It's packed with important papers that should move out of your office fast, but can't get loose. This is a job for Federal Express. For as little as $20, we'll pick up your important papers and deliver them clear across the country overnight. So you'll never have to worry about the paper blob again. Federal Express, when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight. to bring you the Charlotte 500 next Saturday. For those of you who may be joining us late, we're moving to the bottom of the fourth. Game four in Kansas City. Clear skies overhead, but thunder and lightning down on the field. Royals are out in front, five to one, on a strength of nine hits, seven of those for extra bases. As Dickie Knowles prepares to work the fourth, he'll be coming up to the middle of that order. Brett Aikens, McCray, and Otis, those four have combined for a 537 average in this series. And he'll be facing Aikens third, Joe, and we know what he's already done his first two times at bat. That we have, Bryant. He has been a hot, hot hitter. In fact, we are in on history as far as Willie Aikens is concerned. Here's White. High inside, ball one. Didn't get it. One ball, one strike. Five to one, Royals lead, bottom of the fourth. Phillies lead the series two games and one. It's popped up. It is playable. Pete Rose says, I'll take it. One out. There's the blimp. There's the pilot. He's got some seat. All right. Good job. So there's one out, and here is George Brett. Brett 
tripled and scored and hit a ball hard at Trio. He was out at first base. Aikens is the on-deck hitter, and he'll just get a roar when he comes up. Strike one. Aikens, the on-deck batter, is the first player in history to hit two or more home runs twice in the same series. And Jackson's three home runs, Reggie Jackson's three home runs you saw in the flashback were three years ago today. Right to the day. Mm. Trying something new on Brett this time up, who's hit the ball hard almost every time in this World Series, but they're still playing him to pull in the outfield, but they went fastballs low and away. <laughs> he had a fastball low and away from Davis. This guy's got to be a George Brett fan, that youngster. Well, that kid, he was supposed to call his mother, but he bought a hot dog and made the sign up. Two strikes on Brett. a warning issue to the pitcher and we're going to ask Ronnie Luciano who's in the booth. Brett is the calmest guy here. Now Rose is challenging Fry. The other umpires have come in. Gordy McKenzie from third has come in to calm Jimmy down. He wants no one, Jimmy Fry, messing with the man you call the franchise last night, George Brett. So they have stirred up Jimmy Fry. Pete Rose also. Brett very calmly just hanging around, but he really got flipped. We're going to show you the pitch. Ronnie I want you to talk about this after he gets flipped. What an umpire has to do in this situation. Watch George go down. Two pitches down, low in the way, and then he comes high and tight. Quick reaction by George. And this is the only time an umpire has time to think. Here it is. He's looking at the pitch. He sees he comes high in on George, and he's saying to himself, listen, I've got to warn him. What am I going to say? I've got to pick up my words perfectly. And at the same time, while he's watching this, he looks out of the side, and he sees Fry starting to come out of the dugout. So he waits until Fry comes out there, and he gives him a little extra time to go out and say it. He's, he was going to go out to the mound and talk to him, and he's going to tell him, listen, if you come close again, you're gone. Not only you, but I'm going over to Dallas Green, and Dallas is going too. And by the same token, if Dennis Leonard throws at anybody, Dennis Leonard is going to be gone, and Fry, you're going to be gone too. Unfair rule. More. Unfair rule. The first what? guy can take a shot, and the next guy who might let a ball slip, he's thrown out. Why? They, they don't want anyone hurt. The heck with the shots. I get one shot, you get one. None of this even up stuff. We don't want anybody hurt, and he's going to stop both sides. Okay, guys, settle down. <laughs> Curveball inside. Ask about it. Strike is called. He'll hear a boo. There is Dallas Green. He was warned by Denkinger. So the message is clear. Let's see what happens now. The man who hit the two home runs. You're not playing hooky, are you? Here's the man that hit the two home runs. Curveball is a strike. He tied a record today for home runs in two consecutive innings. Ruth in 23 and 28. Hits it foul. Klazuski in 1959. Jackson in 1977. George Brett, he is upset. I don't blame him. That was as good a knockdown as you'll want to see. Off the handle. Most home runs in four-game series, and this is the fourth game now, not a four-game series, but in four games. Garrick did in a four-game series four. Aikens, to show you what he has done so far, has four. He fouled that off his foot. Five games, series, three home runs by Don Clendenin in 1969. The six-game series, Reggie Jackson with his five home runs. Aikens in the fourth game has four home runs. High, one ball, two strikes. 
that's one reason that some people do not like the designated hitter rule. They can't get even with the pitcher who knocks you down. He's sitting on the bench hollering. Line foul. And make no bones about it. There is a sign for that. You take your thumb and your index finger like you're shooting a marble and you flip it and that's the message. Flip him. I don't think pitchers have to be told though. Sometimes. They know they've got to protect their part of the plate, their territory. Got him on strikes. And that ends the inning. So at the end of four innings, the score here, Kansas City five, the Phillies one. These fans are ready. And we've got ourselves quite a ball game. Watch Brett go down once again. No doubt about it. And now we've got some activity over the Phillies dugout. The players are coming out. We'll be back. Five to one. Royals lead the Philly. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. On chips, Ponch and John help a young Indian boy protect wildlife from deadly poachers and learn his heritage. Oh, we're friendly. A special family episode Sunday. TV2 Eyewitness News. Announcing the provider from Terre Haute First National. It's the bank club that's out of this world. It provides you with the most frequently used banking services and more, from no minimum balance checking and unlimited personalized checks to $10,000 insurance and travel discounts. We think you'll like the provider, but decide for yourself. Come to any Terre Haute First National Bank and ask for our brochure about bank clubs. It really tells it like it is. Thank you. Yes, sir -y. Them Daltons had Jesse and the gang trapped. Now, old Jesse had a way out. Of course, it worked much to the gang's liking, but Jesse had some Stroh's beer, and he knowed his gang had follow that Stroh's beer anywhere. Well, them boys got clean away. Now, you may not believe this here tale, unless, of course, you drink <laughs> Stroh's beer. Well, the commotion has subsided, but let's find out what happened from our man who's down there, Merle Harmon. All right, Joe, as Pete Rose came into the dugout, it appeared that somebody threw something on the dugout roof toward him. Of course, Pete reacted like Pete always reacts. The fans are really on him, and of course, his own teammates in the dugout were out to help him out just in case. But things are really heating up down here, and we'll try to stay cool. Joe? Okay, Merle. Tony, remember when the Dodgers went to Yankee Stadium, this game, if it goes back to Philadelphia, this series, it could get interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, we're at the top of the fifth. The Royals lead 5-1 to one over the Phillies. The calmest man through it all was George Brett. He went back to the on-deck circle. He smiled. When he went to his position, he tapped Maddox and McBride coming in from the outfield with a big smile. Don't know what he said, but he was very calm. He knows the pitcher has to do that once in a while. Move you back. Boa. Sliced out of play foul. It went by McBride, Tony. Going over to his position, he looked at it, put up his thumb and his little finger and said, it missed me by just that much. Both of them had a nice smile on their face. Ball was involved in the only run for the Phillies in the uh, second inning. Maddox single, trio. Hit into a force out. UL Washington threw the ball away. Go up. Hit to right field. Hurdle has it. Bow is the man with one out here who in the second single home, the only Phillies run. Well, executive wives go through pressure. Mrs. Don Oldmeyer watching the game. Lady nearest the, uh, on the right side of the screen. Is he going that good? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good catch, huh? Bob Boone, leadoff hitter, Lonnie Smith. Dennis Leonard, who's had some long sits on the bench before the game, the first two innings during the incident where Brett was knocked down. He had to sit and wait through that. Still got pretty good control. One ball, one strike. When it happens to a pitcher, Tony, what they'll try to do if he's on the bench and he's in the middle of a long inning when his team is hitting, the most important thing is to get the wet sweatshirts off, especially on a cool day like today. You don't have to worry about it too much during the summer months, but when it's cool and there's a brisk chill in the air to go in the clubhouse, get your wet sweatshirt off, get a dry sweatshirt off. They do have heaters in the top of the Royals dugout, and there really is no problem keeping warm. It's just keeping the wetness off of your back. 
two ball one strike pitch count goes two and two to Boone with one out Royals five the Phillies one Royals with nine hits Phillies four somewhat of a sloppy sloppily played game early in the ball game the Royals have two errors the Phillies one Boone should be a base set up the middle game is so to so with one out Boone's on down at first base and will bring up the DH Lonnie Smith from Leonard from their center field camera give you a good shot of Bob Boone a fastball hitter and a fastball right down the middle of the plate line drive right up to center field almost Amos Otis plays it so Boone's on first with a single two home runs in this ball game by Willie Mays Aikens and he has enjoyed them both ground ball could be two correct the white he can really unload he's got a very fleet-footed runner and Lonnie Smith right even with a bag he turned it over in a hurry to Frank White. So Dennis Leonard pitches out of the problem here in the fifth inning. The score, as we look at this replay, look how shallow he's playing. Even with third and the runner coming. Boom. Frank White unloads in a hurry. So going to the bottom of the fifth here in Royal Stadium, game number four. The score, Royals five, the Phillies one. Two up. Hal McRae for the Royals, and Amos Otis, and Clint Hurdle. Odds are you sell your house faster if you tell more people about it. That's what this machine does. Like any agent, I find buyers locally, but I can also send a picture and description of your house to buyers in any one of our 4,000 offices. It's like a national multi-list, and only ERA has this system. Think about the odds and then call us. We can find more buyers. That's another reason your ERA real estate specialist is the person you need to know in real estate. RCA wants you to see the right color. Does your television automatically capture all these subtle shades of blue in this ocean of color? Color Track 1981 can. With RCA's exclusive detail processor, Color Track separates detail from color, refines it, then locks the right color on track. Even colors, only subtle shades apart. Color Track 1981. RCA is making television better and better. I'll tell you, I was a born soccer player. Did everything with my feet. Took out the rubbish with my feet, made the bed with my feet, drove my mum crazy. But I finally found something I enjoy doing with my hands. Drinking light beer from Miller. Light has a third less calories than the regular beer. It's less filling. But what really makes me happy is the taste. It's terrific. Now, my mum should be happy too. Look, Mum, no feet. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. In about another inning or two, you will see that shadow cross over a whole plate and head toward the pitcher's mound, and it will get tough to hit in this 5-1 to one ball game with the Royals ahead. But right now, I remind you, this telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. McCray Otis Hurdle. The face Dickie Knowles. Knowles has done a job. Three up, three down in the fourth. And three of the four hitters after a double by Hurdle leading off the third. So he has done his job. He has kept this Royals team close. Until he's trailed by four. You do not see as much middle relief pitching in the American League with the DH. They'll go with the starters longer. One ball to McCray. Knowles also got his message across too to George Brett. He, after he had the knockdown pitch to George Brett, Brett struck out. Aiken struck out right after that. Don't think that those hitters on the bench, etc., don't know what that pitcher's doing out there or what he will do. The official word we get is that there was an official warning to both managers and pitchers and if it should happen again the pitcher throwing the knockdown and, the, and his manager will be ejected one and one to McCray breaking ball hangs up high count goes two and one so Dickie Knowles is behind Hal McCray McCray the DH hitting the number five spot two and two that bears out what Ron Luciano said you don't get even don't want anybody hurt got him inside ran a fastball in on the fists of McCray so he has struck out three in a row now it's AO Amos Otis with a double and a fly ball to right field five to one with a 
full house once again. A little over 42,000 people here in Royal Stadium for for game number four of this World Series. The Phillies won the first two. Kansas City won last night to get back in the World Series. And fellas, we are not being self-serving when we say this, but we got to compliment our engineers, camera crew, George Finkel, who produced the games in Philadelphia, Mike Weissman here, Harry Coyle. You've got great pictures for us. Thank you. Base hit by Otis on a breaking ball up the middle. So he's on. He can steal a base and hurdles the hitter. Left-handed hitter will give him some protection. Otis, two for three in the ball game, a double and a single. In the bottom of the fifth with one out. Royals leading five to one. Royals with four runs in the first inning, another in the second. Phillies came up with their only run in the second. Royals have ten base hits. Phillies five. Hurdle has walked and doubled. A little squib double down the left field line. Jose Martinez, Amos Otis. That is where a coach can help a guy. Oh, and scouting reports talked to Tom Ferrick one of the scouts from the Royals who scouted Philadelphia said we look for pickoff moves from pitchers because of our running game outside one ball no strikes and it might be a little difficult for a player to remember all the slight nuances and pickoff moves and everything else so Jose Martinez has memorized it so he can pass the word along to Otis what kind of move does he have is he quick to first slow to home or vice versa one ball no strikes one out He's an American League umpire. There's Gordy McKenzie down at third base. He says of his ball club, McKenzie, very few rely on him to run the bases. He said, my best base runner is Brett. Second best is McCray. Otis is great. They find the ball. They go on their own. Two and one to Hurdle. Knows another of the young pitchers on the Philly staff out of the Dallas Green School of Pitching. You can see him how he grips the fastball there behind his back. You know, they, they get a good shot of that World Series ball. You could see the red ink that's on that ball as opposed to what would be the green or blue ink on the National or American League ball. Otis was gone. Otis was gone. He took two little shuffle steps off first base, and then Dickie Knoll stepped off. Two strikes to Hurley, quick pitch that time, and caught Amos Otis before he got that walking lead. And once again, they are on him from the dugout. They are saying he did not stop. He pitched too fast. Dinkinger said, oh, yeah, he changed directions, and that's considered a stop. I don't buy that, but Tom Seaver, I know you do, but all you guys <laughs> cheat. Otis and Knowles watching each other. Side count goes full to Hurdle, three and two, and with one out, Amos Otis will probably be on the move. We've got a five to one ball game. The Royals have the lead. He's off. Outside ball four. Royals are two and out of one. Well, it'll bring up Daryl Porter, who has struck out and fouled out. He is having a rough championship series. Oh, for October. And that makes it rugged because there's more people watching you in October if you're playing. This is a carryover, though, from the end of the season because he finished the season hitting 0.97, a terrific slump, one for 10 in the playoffs. He has not had a hit in the World Series. Breaking ball catches the outside corner. One strike on Porter. Two men on, one out. tell the story of his run production late in the season. He blew it by 0-2 to Porter. Porter gets an outside fastball from Dickie Nose, and it looks like he's trying to pull the ball, Tony, instead of going with that ball, trying to hit it up the left center field alley. Really gets back on his heels. 0-2 pitch. Porter tries to go the opposite way that time. I guess you mentioned something with Carlton earlier, how his right shoulder when he threw was opening up too soon. His arm was dragging. The same thing is true of a hitter. 
his right shoulder, in the case of Porter, flies open, the bat drags behind. If you keep that shoulder a little bit longer, you can stay with the ball longer. Two strikes on Porter, Dickie Knowles. Way outside, one and two. One out here in Royal Stadium. Game number four, World Series, Otis at second, Hurdle at first. Phillies won the first two. Oh, about 14 hours ago, in a short night of sleep. The Royals picked up their first World Series win ever. And how important this win would be to tie up this World Series at two apiece. One and two pitch. It was two and two. After the knockdown of Brett, struck out Brett, the check swing, then struck out Aikens, then struck out McCray, and then Otis got a single and hurdle one. Trail, but it's pull foul. High breaking ball, hanging slider. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Otis on his way back to second base with one out. Clint Hurdle has been on base all three times this ball game. Two walks the double. He's down at first. The one ball he did hit hard, he just pulled it foul, and I can't help but think what Bob Forge, the Cardinal pitcher, the fellas in the slump, calls buzzard's luck. You can't kill anything, and nothing will die. Oh, he can't get a break. Well, he's late on the fastball, way out in front on the breaking stuff. Good curveball. Boy, he broke off the curveball. He's just dropped under the hands of Porter. Super pitch for Dickie Knowles with runners on first and second, so there are two outs of UL Washington coming up. Good shot of Knowles, who has an inconsistent curveball at time, but on a 2-2 pitch, outstanding for strike three. Gerald Porter certainly struggling at the plate, had a good ration of hard stuff, and all of a sudden, Knowles pulls the string on them, and he just didn't have a chance. Washington. He is single to short and grounded out. A couple reasons why we didn't sleep well last night. It was, of course, a short night, but one of them, did you hear those horns hawking? Everybody celebrating until about 2.33 in the morning around Kansas City, downtown. Popped up, left side, foul turn, and Schmidt couldn't get his glasses down. Finally does, so Dickie Knowles pitches out of it. Strands two runners after five here at Kansas City. The score, the Royals five, the Phillies one, and there is downtown Kansas City. So we hope you'll tune in and join me for games people play on Thursday. In addition to everything else, we will have a tug of war between the wives of the Phillies and the Royals. We speak of love, there is no love lost for the man about to step in for the Phillies and face Dennis Leonard. He is Pete Rose, and he is the man who confronted Jimmy Fry. And Jimmy Fry came out to the plate to let Dickie Knowles know what he thought of flipping George Brett. Here's the crowd's reaction as we give it to Tony. Those boos are not coming from outside the stadium. A great shot you just saw, but from within. But Pete Rose has heard this before. You play against him, you hate him if you're a fan. The players all respect him. When he joins your team, you love him. Dennis Leonard. He's got a 5-1 to one lead. We're in the 6th. Infield single, lined out to left field. Ground ball, and really playing and pitching him right. Brett to Aikens, the chair goes up for retiring Rose. He tried to hit it past Brett. You can see when he was up there, he was looking that way. Rose rarely bunts. He fakes a lot of bunts, but he doesn't bunt that much. But he tried to smash it by Brett. Couldn't do it. Now it's Big McBride and that shadow as we look at George Brett. A very good fielder. He's improved, Tommy. He used to throw a lot of balls away. Most of his errors came from an erratic arm. Big bunt. Brett is charging from third. One ball, no strikes on McBride. He's right up on the plate with that very short and light bat. Shadow just about ready to creep over home plate. There you see it. Foul out of play by McBride. One and one with one out. Well, late today at 4 Eastern time, NBC Sports World returns live. It's a 10-round light heavyweight bout between undefeated Michael Spinks and Yaki Lopez. 
and some of the greatest names in bowling go pin for pin in Legends of Bowling. All this and more today on NBC Sports World at 4 p.m. Eastern Time following the 1980 World Series here on NBC Sports. Base hit to left center field. It's going to roll to the wall. McBride up and running. Will pull up at second base for the stand-up double. So, after Rose goes down, McBride ignites something with Schmidt coming up. And I've got to add one thing, Joe, before I let you jump in. If you've been a Joe Gargiola fan, as most people have around the country, a little special tribute to Joe. He's done the Today Show and game shows and baseball and wrestling. You name it, he's done it. Nice little tribute for a very special anniversary. We hope our people will tune in. I enjoyed being a small part of it. Congratulations, pal. Okay, Tony, thank you very much. The story will be on Sports Row right now. Let's get to Mike Schmidt. Major League's home run, hitting champion with 48. One out, McBride at second. Phillies trying to come from behind. Royals five, Phillies one. Schmidt has struck out and dropped the bunt single on Brett. Chopper, gonna be trouble. Brett on a tough hop, he recovers the ball. He made a fine play. He got Schmidt just barely, but how Brett recovered and threw Mike Schmidt with that great speed out, Tommy. It's a fine play. Watch how far towards second base he has to go. It's a short hop, knocks it down. He stays right with it, and his green arm gets Schmidt just in time. you got to believe him, especially now, when he says the other night he could have made the two plays on the ball's hit off Larry Gura. Brett did go way to his left. The ball very fortunately popped right up in front of him, and good work, Harry Carl. You could see from that first view that he was out at first base. Uh Dutch Renard at first base has had four plays that are matters of inches and literally tens of thousands of seconds when that foot hits the bag and the ball hits the glove and he has been right there every time. Saving that base hit prevents some problems for Leonard. McBride still stationed at second with two out. One strike on Dal Unser who's 0 for 2, two fly outs. Breaking ball gets away from Daryl Porter not the end of his glove. It'll be a tough official scorer's decision. He didn't move on that ball, Tony. I don't know how they're going to rule it, but he didn't seem to shift. And Daryl is a pretty good catcher. Let's take a look here and see what we can see. He didn't move. He just backhanded that ball. If I was scoring it, I'd give him a pass ball, but I don't know what they're calling him. You know, sometimes Joe, a catcher, when he's, when he's catching a, a control pitcher, won't shift around as much because he knows that pitcher is going to be around the plate somewhere. And that pitch looked like it got way inside. And Darrell looked like it was off balance going after it. Hit off the end of his glove. Wild pitch is charged to Dennis Leonard. One ball, one strike, two outs. Dennis Leonard facing Dallinser. Way outside. The official scores for this World Series. Phil Collier, president of the Baseball Writers Association of San Diego Union. Don Fannensteel of the Independence Missouri Examiner. And Bob Kenny. Camden Courier Post. So they get their heads together and decide. And we saw him McBride at third. And I'm not second guessing the call because I said it first. He didn't move. He should have gotten a pass ball. Two and one. Foul out of play by Unser. Two balls, two strikes with two outs. Royals five, Phillies one. We're in the top of the sixth. Dennis Leonard, who in game one had a four to nothing lead. A couple of home runs in that ball game got him the lead. And then it slipped away. The Phillies came back. Leonard with McBride at third, really taking more time. Unser is also getting his thoughts together. Breaking ball, he got it. Slider out of the strike zone, but he gets Dell Unser for a strikeout, so he strands. Take the pride at third base. The score here in Kansas City. Royals five. Phillies one. Just beyond. Right center field fence up on a hill here in Royal Stadium, Kansas City. A couple of horsemen, policemen in the area, were patrolling it. Show you the difference of the atmosphere in Philadelphia, which Merle Harmon described so vividly and picturesquely. Philadelphia versus Kansas City, two different types of cultures. Well, Kevin Saussier, a new pitcher, has come in, and Ron Luciano, there was a meeting with a home plate umpire before he threw his first warm-up pitch. What was it about? Don Denkiger went out to Kevin and he said, look at Kevin, we had an incident before, and I'm warning you, before it even happens, if it comes close, you're out of here. I don't want 60,000 people or 40,000 people coming out of the stands and getting on me, you, and the ball players. We're not going to have any incidents today. And in case you missed it, joined us late, 
Maris Dinkinger, the home plate umpire, the American League. The incident that Ron Luciano referred to was when George Brett had a no-ball, two-strike count on him. They had pitched him away twice. Dickie Knowles came inside. He was flipped, Brett was, and there was a near fight between Jim Fry, the pitcher, Pete Rose. But the umpires calmed it right on down and did a great job. Five to one, Royals over the Phillies. All six runs scored in the first two innings. Five by the Royals. Phillies with one. There's a sign out in right field, and uh, Don Denker motions to the umpires, and it's going right down the line to please remove the sign. Willie Wilson will bat from the right side. At X, Michigan. Wilson, White, Brett. There is the bullpen, Kansas City's. Associates first pitch to Willie Wilson. Gets away from Boone, one ball. Wilson in the first inning drawing that throw gets by and you know he's got second easily but he doesn't hesitate there he goes two balls no strikes to Willie Wilson during the regular season at 304 left-handed but right-handed 361 that is his natural side 3 and 0 he began switching in 1977 Willie Wilson John Sullivan now a coach for the Brewers made him a switch hitter then Chuck Hiller was a coach under Herzog, now a Mets manager, refined it and taught him how to do it. So he's out, and look out. Five to one, the Royals over the Phillies. So Kevin Sochier walks the first hitter he faces, the wrong one probably, Willie Wilson, and it'll bring Herb Sturet out. He's the pitching coach. Tony, as he walks out there before, Tom, I know you got an idea what he's saying, that shadow is gonna be a factor. It is right now covering home plate, and it's gonna get tougher and tougher. Herbert Surratt going out to talk to his young pitcher, Kevin Saucier. Kevin's numbers, when you look at them, pretty good. Seven and three with a 3.42 ERA in the 1980 season. Pitched just 50 innings. If he does have a problem, and this is why Herbert Surratt went out to talk to him, it would be with his control. And Willie Wilson, four pitches and a base on balls. That's a good way for the Royals to start a rally. If you hadn't noticed, as the pitching coaches go out the mound during the course of the series, Watch it the next time because Connors and Sturette approach it differently. Billy Connors will go directly to the pitcher. Herb Sturette will always go to the catcher and talk to him first and then walk with the catcher. He wants to find out from the catcher first because pitchers do lie at times. Okay, you also don't know. Tony also wants to tell the catcher what he's going to say to the pitcher before he gets out there. All right, five to one. The Royals over the Phillies. In the bottom of the six, Wilson at first. Soche. Had Wilson going back toward first base in that pitch, so it's one ball, no strikes. White, as we look at Willie Wilson, he was second in the league in stolen bases with 79. Ricky Henderson of the A's, an amazing 100. Not a big lead in this 1-0 no count. Fly ball, short right field, McBride. Oh, he had some trouble with the wind there. The wind is blowing out pretty strongly when that ball gets up high as that one did toward right field. One out. George Brett, he struck out his last time up, but that was the time at bat when they had the incident. And here's what happens. Take a look at it. That is a major league flip, a major league knockdown right there, I'll tell you. And look at him staring back. Let them know, I know what you did, and I'll get you. He goes up the middle a little bit more as Soche throws over to Wilson. A little bit more up the middle in the left field and does not try and pull the ball as much against left-handed pitching. But there are situations when he's ahead on left-handers, he will look inside and can pull the ball. One ball, no strikes with one out. Brett the hitter. He has triple score to run, grounded out hard in the second inning of second base, and then struck out in a tough breaking pitch from Noel. 1-0 to George. Wilson back. Tony Sasse has got a, has a, a rather awkward move. Not really a good move, but it's awkward enough, really, that it'll freeze runners once in a while. They can't really tell which way he's going. It's a high knee kick. There it is. Left center field. Dal Unser. He battles the sun, and he makes a nice catch. Made it look easier than it was into that sun. So 
Brett, for the third time in this ball game, hits one right on the nose. But he's finally retired. Well, for the second time, he struck out the last time. Wilson's still down there at first. I played with Del Hunter in New York for several years, and he is a center fielder by trade, and an outstanding center fielder. With an excellent arm, good hands. Dale is a heads up, 100% ball player all the time. Always into the ball game, always knows exactly where the runners are, how many outs, it's a real mental player. Willie Mays Aikens, they tell us he does not like the middle name Mays used anymore, even though it is officially his name. He wants to be known as Willie Aikens. Next year, it'll be W.M. Aikens. If he keeps on going like this, they won't know how to put his name in the record book. He has two home runs today. One ball, no strike, and Aikens. The other time up in the fourth, he struck out. His second home run was really a blast deep into the bullpen in right field. Wilson, not with a big lead, back in time. Two outs. One ball, no strikes. The count on Aikens. Wilson at first. Royals lead 5-1 to one at the bottom of the sixth. Wilson has not had a whole lot of opportunities to run in this series, but he's going to get a free base right there as a breaking ball. It's away from Bob Boone, bounds into the stands, who's given one base, and it will be charged as a wild pitch to Sochan. Boone has gotten a workout today after a short night, Joe. He's had a big workout the whole series, and he's done some job of blocking it, but that was a, just a wild pitch. Wilson has two stolen bases in this series, but he hasn't been on base that much with all the strikeouts. 3-0 to Aikens. First base open, but you've got McRae, a right-handed hitter up, and he's got a couple of doubles that he made himself by hustling from home to second base. 3-0, two outs. And some of the times he's been on, the situations haven't dictated that he steal. Many times you have a slower base runner in front of him in this series. Three and one. Way outside, Aikens is on. They'll have to pitch to a tougher hitter against left-handers, Hal McCray. So Aikens with two home runs and a walk and a strike count. Now comes Dallas Green. had some activity in that bullpen in Dallas. When he comes out, that usually means he's going to make a pitching change. He is going to make it. Brewster has been loosening up for the Phillies, so, so Shea will be leaving. Now you see Brewster. Another change. Well, they don't know how to spell Warren Brewster in Japanese, but we have broadcasters from literally all over the world here, and that is a Japanese broadcasting team. As Brewster comes in with their notes, Corey Liable on our handheld camera into that area. It is amazing where this ball game is going. Game number four of the World Series that did the first three. 215 television stations in the States. Additional U.S. pickups, American Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, live satellite television feed. It goes all over the world. West Germany, Italy, Spain, Korea, Philippines, Panama Canal Zone, Japan, Alaska, Guantanamo, and Cuba, international fields. Feeds, we could go on and on. Canada, of course, friends up there, Bermuda, Dominican Republic, most Latin American countries, Taiwan. It is amazing where this place goes. The Netherlands, Antilles, would you imagine? And, and, I'm, there? and I didn't name them all. I'm thinking of the times that they're watching the games because tomorrow's game, for example, starts 4.30 Eastern time. And I just wonder where they hear it in those areas. Warren Brewster, the fourth pitcher. Christensen started, no Soche, and now Brewster with two men on for Kansas City and two outs. Could you read that scouting report on Brewster in <laughs> Japanese? Just the first line where it said six feet two inches tall and 185 pounds. One ball, no strikes with two outs. The Royals lead five to one in the bottom of the sixth. Chopper rolls with a nice backhand. will go to second base. He is so alert. He took the easy way out, flipped the ball, so Brewster with one pitch, pitches out of a jam for the Phillies, and the middle relief has been pretty good for the score here in Royal Stadium. Kansas City 5, Philadelphia 1. It'll be Gary Maddox, Manny Trio, 
and BOA. And we'll be back after these messages from your local station. Eyewitness News. Tomorrow, a, well, let's begin with Sports World right after our game, that big fight. You know, Leon Spinks gets the publicity. Michael's been doing quite a job. This is a big fight for him. It's a 10-round light heavyweight fight. It'll be uh, live. Yaki Lopez, if Spinks can get by him, but Lopez have plenty to say about that. Then we'll have Legends of Bowling. That's Sports World following this game today, 4 o'clock Eastern time. Now, tomorrow, big afternoon of sports. It begins with NFL 80. Brian Gumbel will be bringing you all the latest news, the scores, the highlights. And then we'll have some regional action as the Buffalo Bills take on the Dolphins or the Seattle Seahawks against the Jets. And then following football, it's the 1980 World Series, back where it belongs, right here with the proud Peacock. You'll see Game 5, the Phillies and the Royals, beginning at 4 o'clock Eastern time. So sports world after our game today, and then NFL 80, football and baseball tomorrow afternoon. There's a delay in right field at sign. They just are kind of anxious to get that sign on. They keep putting it down, and they keep asking to take it off. Popped up in the infield, and there's one out. That sun is a factor. You saw UL flip the glasses. The shadow is now in front of home plate. There you see it. Some pitchers say, I don't want to throw anything but fastball. Others say they want to throw nothing but curveballs when they have a batter in the, in the shadow. Manny Trio. It's a strike. Tom, when you were pitching and the hitter was in the shadows, what did you try to stay away from? Just try to stay away from the ball upstairs. Keep it downstairs as much as you can. More difficult to see a ball downstairs than and upstairs. Time was called a big beach ball came out of the bullpen area. And that's about the way the baseball has been looking to Willie Aikens like a beach ball. Looks that way to there's no pitch on that. There you see the bullpen. So it's strike one. I remember the late Paul Weiner talking about that. He said when I'm hitting good that ball looks like a basketball when I'm not hitting it looks like a baseball. I believe it. Right center field, this is going to be trouble. It's in for extra bases. Manny Trio rounds first. He's digging for second. They get that ball back into Frank White. These outfielders, they don't really waste any time. They just get that ball back in, and these Kansas City Royals line up. You remember in the championship series when Wilson overthrew, there you see Trio. When he overthrew, they were there trailing the play. George Brett got the man at the play. High breaking pitch, Tom. Manny Trio likes the ball up and out over the plate. He drives it up the alley in right center. The outfield here in Kansas City, very big. A lot of room in the alleys. A lot of room all the way back to the wall. Manny Trio made it to second easily. And looked, Tony, like he was grabbing his leg at, at second base. He sure did. He slightly pulled a hamstring. He's still he doing it. His right leg. You can see it, Tom. Good observation. Strike That's not one. not going to help him, is it? He pulls a muscle. One out. One strike. Five to one. Royals are leading. Seventh inning. Outside. The outfield. They're in and shaded towards the left. Boy, doesn't have too much power. There's a good shot of it. You can see how shallow they are. A lot of room in right center field. They do not expect Boa to pull the ball. One ball, two strikes. Quisenberry in the bullpen for Kansas City. I don't think after the first game performance of Leonard, he should be tired going into this late part of the ball games. But any team you pitch against who's got the, the comeback potential of the Phillies, I mean, you got to throw every pitch with something on it. It means a lot. He's thrown a lot of fastballs, too, Tony. He's only thrown 75 pitches so far. We're in the seventh inning, which is a terrific number for seven innings. Down the left field line, it is a fair ball. Wilson playing shallow was able to keep Trio at third. There's a ball hit. Four feet, maybe not that far inside the line, but they had him played perfectly, and sometimes the scouting reports are laughed at, but there was a pretty good example of playing a man a certain way, pitching him that way, and getting it done. 
perfect example of that, Joe, no question about it. The book on Larry Boa, pitch him away, play him away, and there's Willie Wilson right by the left field line. Holds Boa at a single and holds Trio at third base. I'll tell you, the way Brett reacted, too, he really watched that runner at first base. Here it is, it scoots to the left with that English, and Willie Wilson got to that ball in a hurry. We told you about his throwing him. It's not that strong, but on artificial surface, the ball gets to you a little quicker, and he has infield instincts. He's off, and that speed makes up for a lot because he gets to the ball a little bit quicker. Billy Connors leaves. And there's Tug McGraw. He's been the workhorse of the Philadelphia Phillies bullpen. He's seated on the bench right now. It's a 5-1 ball game. Royals are leading. We're in the seventh inning. These Phillies threatening. They came from behind in all their ball games in the championship series, postseason play. So four runs. Not that big a cushion. Bob Boone. Boone, he singled his last time up. Deep left center field. Wilson going way back, way back, way back. Makes the catch. Oh, what a catch. Trio scores five to two. Sheer speed did that. Another great World Series catch. They'll be playing that back to back to Willie Mays. His catch off Vic Wirtz. He simply outran that ball. He excites you on the bases, at the bat, and he just did it on the field. When you figure where he was playing Boone, very shallow. Look where he started from and how far he had to go. He's battling the sun, a crosswind. And if that did not remind you of Mays' catch-off thick words, nothing will. His speed is outstanding, Tom. He looks absolutely like a split in here, Tony, and he was recruited for a football from some in New Jersey, and they said he was the best running back in his class east of the Rocky Mountains, and that's why the University of Southern California won him. He was a tremendous prospect for football. Here's Lonnie Smith. There goes Ball again. Here's the throw. They'll not get him. They're trailing by three, but Ball, who started the fire, takes off again, and he's got a stolen base. It's a 5-2 to two ball game. These Phillies... He did it in game one, down four to nothing off the same pitcher, Leonard, so he knows something about Leonard. Don't know if he's been able to pass it along to his teammates, but he knows something, a move that he's got. He's picked something up because he's doing it with such confidence. Three runs down and four runs down in game one. He is three for three as far as stolen bases in the series. UL Washington has it. There's the throw. And as we go in the bottom of the seventh, Royals five, Phillies two. And of 1980. Don't miss out on next year's great moments. Baseball fever. Catch it now for 1981. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Picturesque setting here in Kansas City Royal Stadium. Heartland of America. Bottom of the seventh, five to two, Kansas City leading here is Amos Otis. He has been a tremendous player in this series. He is two for three today, a double, single. Here comes another beach ball out of the left field area. George Toma's crew policing it. I tell you, that Toma and his crew, they police this carpet like it was in a living room. Listen to the fans. Fail should be no problem for Maddox. One out. And Merle Harmon is down with manager Bill Burton, who thought he might be here. Let's go down to Merle. All right, Joe, and a week ago today, Bill, you were involved in one of the most bizarre games, probably, in baseball history. A triple play that wasn't. Was the ball caught or not? Now, as you sit here and watch this game, are you thinking, hey, my team should be out there? I think the, the club that deserves to be out there is out there. They, they come back. They wouldn't be beaten. We played a good series, but they won the ball game. All right, now what's the key to who's going to win this thing? Well, I think right now it's probably pretty even up. Uh, take your pick. 
I got a root for uh, Philadelphia. I know a little bit more about Philadelphia than I do Kansas City. Some of these pitchers I, from Kansas City Club I haven't seen before, so I'm, I really intelligently can't pick a club, but I will root for Philadelphia. All right, Bill, thank you very much. One out, back to the booth. Okay, Merrill, thank you, Bill Burton. Isn't he something? Lose a tough series like that and say the team that deserved to win is out there. Nobody likes losing, but somebody has to lose. And those Houston players should be very proud. It is line foul down the third baseline. Two outs. Joe, the way the extra base hits were flying around here in the ballgame, if you weren't keeping score, you would always think that Kansas City's got about an eight-run lead. And it's really something. It's only five to two. Phillies have not been blown out at all. There is Ewing Kaufman, the owner, the late Ernie Mal and Earl Smith, who went to Ewing Kaufman and said, hey, we need a ball club in Kansas City. You got your money, let's open up the wallet. He did, and he is living a whole new life. He's enjoying it. They pioneered a great organization here, Mr. Kaufman, the Royal Lancers. Three balls in one strike. Brewster, Warren Brewster, five to two. He, he has, has one. one of, excuse me, Joe. He has one of the most expressive face, expressive face I've ever seen in a picture with that chalk. Walked in. Porter is on, and it brings up U. L. Washington. Good crowd on hand. There's the left field area, that corner. Different angle. Look at the shadows. There's a good, good pictures of the factor that the shadows are here. They have really been creeping out and out and out. And when that pitcher's in sunlight and you're in the shade, that ball comes up looking like a barber pole and spinning. Many trio, big hop in time so that ends the seventh inning we complete seven innings of baseball here and it's the kansas city royals five the philadelphia phillies two immediately following sports world <laughs> there's a sign that was left over from the columbus day parade they're my write-ins in november <laughs> kids looking for the italian vote his spelling was pretty bad but i appreciate the sentiment pete rose and look at these Royals fans. Go Royals, number one World Series. Well, they're well on their way to tie in this series at two games apiece tomorrow. Gura against Bystrom. Left center field. It'll be extra bases. Willie Wilson slipped as the ball was hit, and Pete Rose has himself a double. more than one rally in his career that's for sure Pete Rose has been silenced more or less in this series but here's his first extra base hit a double up the alley in left center field Charlie Hustle Pete Rose Jim Fry is going out to that mound keeping in mind that these Philadelphia Phillies have been coming back coming from behind he is motion he's going to make a change Tom they don't wait very long with Dennis Leonard one of the things that Dennis Leonard does when he gets tired he begins to drop his elbow below his shoulder and gets underneath the slider underneath his fastball but he's going to get a great hand from the Royal fan Dennis Leonard leaves. He gave him seven tough innings, and he leaves with a man on second to score five to two. Quisenberry coming in. We've got a break in the action. We'll be back. Instant photography by Kodak and the big audition. The cornucopia. It is a horn of plenty. Hold it. Got the flash, Marvin? Sure. It's still trying in. Very good. Okay, next. Fine crops of grain and fruit. You're on, Louise. Well, Marvin, what do you think? I think all my pictures are great. The Kodak Colorburst 250, the instant camera with built-in flash and brilliant color by Kodak. 
about yourself. You're drinking Diet Pepsi Cola with just one calorie and that great honest to Pepsi taste. And it shows in the way you look, the way you feel, and in everything you do. Diet Pepsi. One small calorie, one great taste. Using the surgical fiber optic lens, Prestone Labs is going to show you what weak, neglected antifreeze can do to your radiator after only 9,000 miles. Look at these passages. Rust, corrosion, continued neglect could clog them and overheat this radiator. But look at a Prestone protected radiator after the same 9,000 miles. Quite a difference. Prestone has a patented silicone silicate formula to lock out rust and corrosion. Prestone 2 and Prestone Super Flush. No wonder we're number one. I'm here with Audrey Leonard, and as you look at your husband down in the dugout right now, what are your thoughts? I'm, I'm sure he's very happy with the results of the game. I mean, it's not over yet, but I think he's pitched a real good game, and I'm sure he's real happy. Okay, you were in Philadelphia, right? I sure was. What happened after that ball game? Did, uh, did you discuss it? Uh, Dennis doesn't like to discuss the games. He never takes the games home. I take them home. That's probably why he doesn't take them home. Um, <laughs> We, he came back from the game. We had a lot of family there. He was real relaxed, and there was you can't look back at the past. And we sat down and we had a couple of drinks and just relaxed and laughed it all off. And we said we're going to go get him today. Okay, Audrey, thank you so much. Now back to Joe. Quisenberry against Bake McBride. Thank you, Merle. Audrey Leonard. There's a strike. He's the big man out of the bullpen for these Royals, and his fans react. McBride, who doubled his last time up. Two is the score. Pete Rose at second base. Kansas City leading. One ball, one strike. Kansas City bullpen busy. There's Ken Brett. one strike five to two keep in mind if McBride gets on the tying run will be in the batter's box and that's Mike Schmidt the on deck batter so Mrs. Leonard said Audrey Leonard the game is not over how well you've been watching bouncing ball foul Ruben tomorrow I didn't see him do that 10, 15 years I watched him. Rose at second base. Quisenberry. Calm. They say he had to work on his temper. Now he seems to have it under control. Easy going. Jim Fry. He's got Brett from the bullpen. But Quisenberry was an overhand thrower. And he got in college and he said he got a tired arm, a shoulder, and he kept dropping down. Bouncing ball to White. To first in time. Rose moves to third. There's one out. Brings up Mike Schmidt with Del Unser on deck. Third base with Mike Schmidt. Tom, I, I don't know why I get this feeling, but twice off Quisenberry, Schmidt has hit the ball hard, balls down and in. As far he's trying to go the opposite way on that sink. If, I would like to see him change his pattern and go away. I talked to Mike yesterday about that, and he said he tries to hit Kent Colby the same way. He tries to hit him up the right center field alley. Because he can drive that ball, even look for the ball inside, and still is able to inside out the ball and drive it up the right field alley. There's a good shot from the center field camera to see how Quisenberry will work against Schmidt. Also, the shadows. Ball one. The Phillies have come from behind six times in September, and all five of their postseason wins. Tony mentioned yesterday they've won 23 of their last 30 road games. It's popped up. Hurdle says I'll take it. Rose is tagging up. Here he comes. Here's the throw. It is five to three. Rose scores, and it's Royals five, Phillies three. And 
Daryl Porter, who was standing in the third base line, got out of the way because Pete was not going to slide. Had that play been close, he was going to take a shot at Porter. Like he did, it was at Pujols in the championship series, Houston. Here comes Hurdle's throw. It was Bochy in the championship series. He was not going to slide at all, and Porter went out of the way and took a little swipe tag. So, 5-3 to three the score now, and here is Del Unser. Unser is 0 for 3. who got the big base hit off Quisenberry, hit it into left center field, went the opposite way. Two balls, no strikes. Mike Schmidt drives in the run. Hunter's a much better hitter, Joe, when he goes with the ball, tries to hit the ball up the left center field alley when he tries to pull the ball, as he did earlier in the game today. He hit the fly balls to right field. That's not the way Dell hits. Base hit to right field. Hit it hard. So he's on, and the tying run is at the plate. Gary Maddox. Kansas City bullpen busy again. Carson game one. Kansas City had the lead. Quisenberry's the man who came in. He said he wasn't throwing hard, but I think the Phillies, he threw very well. Got three ground balls, the first three hitters he faced. And the Phillies hit some good pitches also. Unser was one of them who hit the ball the opposite way. But he couldn't hold him in game one. Two men out. Maddox, single his first time up. Bounced out, popped out. Off the handle. Washington, a tough play. Ain't getting. So Quisenberry does get the job done. This is Quisenberry watching the game. Seated next to Merle Harmon, who's in the section. Janie Quisenberry. And 5-3 is the score. Middle of the eighth. Royals leading. Two up. Willie Wilson. Frank White and George Brett. It'll be a big day on NBC tomorrow. As you saw, it begins with NFL to today. There's a shot of Kansas City skyline. Beautiful countryside. Ballpark in the jam parking lot. 42,363. What did I say? NFL 80, NFL today. NFL 80. All right. I just all kind I tell you what, you put you begin with Brian Gumble and stay with us all day. That's tomorrow. This afternoon. After this game, we're gonna watch a pretty good fight. I know I'm gonna watch it. Michael Spinks, St. Louis boy, against Yaki Lopez. There's a the strike. 42,363, 17 less people than last night. Where are those 17 people? Boa. In time, Wilson is out. A lot of talk today around the batting cage. Some talk was about Boa and that ball that was smashed at him last night. The brave souls who will second guess and say, ah, he should have taken that one in the chest. <laughs> hit, taking it on the kneecap. Boy, I'll tell you, it's easy to talk when you haven't been in the arena. You have to react that quickly. It's very instinctive. There's a strike to Frank White. I asked Larry about that. You know what he said, don't he? Mm. He's trying to get out of the way of it. <laughs> I mean, as honest as he could be, I was trying to get out of the way of it. I don't blame him. Ball. I can just hear those old ball players. All that money those guys are getting. Two strikes. The count on White. Off the handle. Foul ball. You know, home field advantage in basketball or football, I can understand it because it's the field is laid out. But I would think any home field advantage is what you said, batting last and the crowd. Knowing your park, the park as we're looking at it right now, the team was tailored for it. Joe Burke, the president of the ball club, John Sherholz, player personnel. They wanted speed to cover the alleys and take advantage of artificial surface, base stealing and base speed. There he is, the franchise on deck, George Brett. Didn't mean to swing right to trio. 
Two up, two down. George Brett has hit the ball hard three times. That's one base hit. for four and he's made some good plays in the field trio to his right beautiful play the throw in time what a play by Manny trio he took a cinch base hit away from Brett only that strong arm Tony can can he make a play like that well all we need here is Doug Flynn from the Mets Willie Randolph from the Yankees we'd have about the four best second baseman in the game trio and white have really put on the show mm. so at the end. Joe Gargiola with Tony Kupek, Tom Seaver here at Royal Stadium. This is game four. Royals are leading five to three. Five runs, ten hits, and two errors for Kansas City. Three runs, ten hits, and one error for the Phillies. As you see the shadows, it creeped in front of the mound. Ninth inning trio, Boa and Boone. You would think that you would rather not have, or you'd rather have the last three guys in the lineup up against you. Inning, but they have been very productive in this World Series. Trio Boa and Boone. Now base five times today and a couple runs scored to sacrifice fly. Trio scored twice. He was safe on a forceful play. Went to second on an air. He doubled and scored in the seventh. Boa and RBI. One hop to Brett. One out. this builds up, you're going to hear an eruption. Boa singled and drove in a run in the second. He flied to right in the fifth. He singled and stole a base in the seventh. Brett moving in a third. in at the corner at first. Brett in at the corner at third. One and one. Foul out of play. One ball, two strikes, one out. Nobody on. Kansas City five, Phillies three. Quisenberry looking on as our man tries to nail it down. He did it 30, 33 times during the season. Here's a tough play. Foul. See, Janie is almost clenching her teeth. She's under as much tension as her man, but she can't do much, much more than she's doing. Sitting, watching, and hoping. And laughing. Nervously. Foul ball. Wife. Mostly in the background, playing wife and mother during the day hours, coming out the ballpark and having to be Miss Glamorous baseball wife. Super ladies. White. Two outs. Martinez and Fry are pointing to Brett. The crowd, like in Philadelphia, they will broadcast an umpire for you. Something a little bit unusual, though you've seen it before, Joe. Quisenberry pitching from the stretch with nobody on. Obviously, Fry and Connors have gotten with him, and he's a little bit more comfortable from the stretch, if you notice. 
He is. Ball one. Foul ball. One ball, one strike. Dallas Green. Once again, Jimmy Fry saying, watch the butt. He showed enough appreciation for that play that Frank White just made on Cole, who slaps and runs. That was a good play. Two balls in the strike. Most of the crowd standing. Kansas City wins this game. This World Series is tied at two apiece. Gura for Kansas City. Bystrom for the Phillies tomorrow. Inside. Three balls in one strike. Says it all for the Philadelphia side. Kansas City bench. Bouncing ball. You'll hear it. 